Hello everyone, it's Chris, and this is part 5 of the Debian web server tutorial series. I suppose this is where we start doing something useful. So, in this video I'll be showing you how you can install some of the main things that make a web server, well, a web server. The first application we're going to be installing is Apache. So that is our main web server, or Apache 2 should I say. Then there's MySQL Server, which is what we'll be using to run our database. Then there's PHP MyAdmin, which we'll be using that database and providing us with a graphical user interface, just so that if you don't really know some of the Linux commands or the MySQL commands, should I say, then at least you've got something to play with and it allows you to do all the things you need to do. The next thing is PHP 5 Curl. And the reason for this one is in one of the previous videos or one of the previous uh, tutorial service I've done, we talk about how we can set up a web server for um, WordPress and one of the common things that the WordPress themes use is PHP Curl and Curl is quite a useful um, application to have PHP or have enabled on your server so that's why we're using that one and as well as that we're going to be installing OpenSSH so if you don't know what that is it basically allows you to use something a lot like telnet to talk to your server and issue server commands and basically it allows you to be in front of your server providing maintenance and any other task you want to do without physically being in front of your server so before we've had um, issues where something isn't working and I haven't got a computer in front of me the only thing I've got is my mobile phone and you can even get applications so you can talk to your server through your phone and you can get things up and running again so it's definitely worth having and it's a lot nicer to look at than black and white because you can change some of the colours in certain um, applications which allow you to use SSH like putty so you'll notice that after this video the screen won't be as big and it won't be using black and white, it'll be black and green so green is a very nice colour to use in my opinion, it makes it a lot easier to look at so, um, as you should already know I'm doing mine in a virtual machine so I might as well get in front of it so, the first thing we need to do is use the Debian um, tool for installing things. So to do that we type in apt get and then install. So that's telling the application manager that we want to install something. And then we have to tell it what we want to install. Because we want to install multiple packages, we simply list the packages one after the other. So we do Apache blah 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 that was wrong. Apache 2 followed by MySQL hyphen server then PHP my admin. Will I ever be able to type when I'm doing videos? I really don't think I will. Then PHP 5 hyphen curl and then open sh hyphen server. Right. What did I type in wrong? Right, there we are. I have no idea what I typed in wrong, and if you want to comment below and tell me what I did wrong, then f feel free to, because I'd love to know. But anyway, um, probably just be me typing it in wrong, which I seem to do quite a lot. So yeah, um, it's going to tell us that there's quite a lot of packages we need to install, it's going to take up 146 megabytes of additional space, would you like to continue? And the answer is yes. So we can start the installation or the download then the installation should I say so when this is finished we'll be asked to configure a few of the applications such as MySQL uh, PHP MyAdmin um, and that's it we will also be going into the SH or SSH uh, config file and changing the port as well this is just because it allows us actually I might do that in another video 
No, I'm going to do it in this video. So, what it's going to do is it's going to basically secure our SSH server because you, if you've ever had an SSH server and you left it on the default port, you'll notice that there are a lot of um, bots out there that scans things on port 22 and tries to get access to your servers. So, especially if you're not using a very secure password, it, it's just best to change the port, and I'll tell you how you can do that. So, what we're getting asked for here is our MySQL root user. And this is basically saying, what do you want us to use as your password for the root user? I'd recommend using something secure, but if you're silly enough to want to put the word password as your password, then see how long it takes you to get hacked. So, yeah. Oh. So, yeah, I'd recommend using a mixture of capital letters, uh, lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols. Once you've done that, click enter, and you will have to repeat it. And yes, as it's me, I've made a mistake typing. Right, there we are. And in the next window, we are getting asked which uh, web server we'd like to use this for. This is for PHP My Admin, so it's not necessarily to do the database as of yet. So if you're using, if you decide to ignore me on the Apache side of things, then select your uh, web server you're using, or you can just press the space key to select Apache and click enter. We'll then need to type in our root user's password again into uh, phpmadmin just so it can access the database. So that should be happening any time now-ish. That would have been a good time to pause the video and wait for it to happen, wouldn't it? Right, I'll pause the video and um, start it up again when it's finished. Right, that's finally finished installing. So um, now we need to be well, asked if we are going to be using anything else. Um, or oh, PHP might be using any other type of database on here. Um, well, you can read that anyway. So, the answer for this is I'm going to configure the database for PHP with this blah blah blah. blah. Just clicking yes, basically. Hello everyone, this is finally finished um, doing its thing. So, the next thing we um, are asked to do is not the password, so I got that a little bit wrong. Um, but we've been asked to uh, basically have the PHP configuration file being installed into a database and if you've already had this done or you particularly know what you're doing you want to do it manually then go ahead and do that you click no but as I'm not going to be using any other type of database other than PHP my admin and MySQL then I'm going to go ahead and click yes so once you've done that then you'll get asked for your password so type that in and don't get it wrong like I usually do and then we need to choose the MySQL application password for PHP My Admin. And I'm just going to be using um, my standard password for that. And after you've done that, you'll have to confirm it. And that's it. So the next thing we're going to be doing is changing the port for SSH. Uh, it's quite simple how we do it, but the reason I'm going to tell you how you can do it is you shouldn't really leave it on the default port because there are certain places, um, i.e. China, who actually do lots of scans um, for web servers and sees whether they have the SSH port open. And this is because obviously if you can guess the root user's password, you can gain access to their server. And you'll find that a lot of people use very, very, very obviously stupid passwords. One of which is Tor, which is root backwards, which I know um, is the default password for a few operating systems out there. So again, this is definitely worth changing. So the way you do this is you, use a, you choose a text editor, for instance, uh, Nana. So, Nana. One sec. So yeah, you type in nano, and then the file we're going to change. So this is etc, ssh, 
again, mystic, SSHD, underscore, config. And then this line here, you will see it say port 22. You can choose a port and change it to that. So the port I'm going to be using is 220. I'm not really going to be using this on my server, but obviously with this just to prove it works. So you can change your port there and then you do control O and enter to save and then control X to exit. Once you've done that, you then do service. I don't know if I have that wrong. Service and then SSH and then restart. Once you've done that, it'll restart your SSH server and you're good to connect to it. If you already have a text editor, then great. Not a text editor, sorry. Um, an SSH tool, then great. If not, then I'd recommend downloading one called Putty, which is very useful. So, once you've connected to it, you should... well. I might as well show you how you can connect. This is Putty. Um, you can type in the IP address of the server or the host name. Put the port in here, and if you want to change the color schemes, then you can. I'm going to be doing it so the text is green. Click open. You should see an alert message like this for the first time you've connected to it. And um, you can just click yes and then it should ask you to log in. So you type in your root user or any other user you want to connect to and then you put in a password. And there you are, you are connected and you can do anything you need to do. If you don't know why SSH is quite useful, one thing I will say is it provides you with um, a very easy way to remotely administer your server. If you've got an error, that happens, say maybe you're out somewhere and someone rings you up and says, hey, your server's broken, or they aren't necessarily broken, but <laughs> um, it's done something you don't like, for example. Or you need to quickly do a backup because you know that maintenance needs to be administered. Or, anyway, you get the idea. And you're not in front of a computer, sir. If you've got a smartphone, there's many applications which allow you to remotely connect to your server via SSH and you can do everything you need to do over your phone so that's quite useful I tell you now I've definitely had that problem care and we've had to do the same so yeah in the next video um, I'm going to be doing one of my least favorite things which is installing Persfix uh, I say that because I, I wouldn't say I'm a genius when it comes to Linux or I, I'll just say that when it comes to the things I need to do I know how you do them but when it comes to you setting up a mail server, I've had a lot of issues in the past. This is to do with the companies I've used as mail servers and a lot of other reasons. And I've just learnt to hate the application. It's very good, but it can be a bit of a git to set up if you don't know what you're doing. And obviously when I did it, I had no clue, so it took forever. But I'm going to be setting it up to use Google's mail servers. So it's definitely going to be something worth watching as if you've got a website, you're going to want to send something out via PHP or something like that. And you can't do that unless you've got a mail server built into your server. So I'm going to be using Persfix as a, um, a satellite system to remotely or relay emails to another mail server, for example Google, which I will show you how you can do. So I will see you in the next video. That might be going up today. It might not. I'll try and get it done, but... I'm going to try and put off doing post fix because I just hate it. But uh, if you subscribe to my channel, you'll get an email when it comes out. Hopefully. <laughs> so, thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, like it. If you're not, then I'm sorry. Please don't kill me. And I'll see you in the next video.